Andrew? Thank you, Warren. The following question comes from Aritz Galdos, um, and several other shareholders asked uh, similar questions that are part of this as well. Uh, it's a bit of a multi-part question. Uh -uh. <laughs> About two dozen men and women work with you, Warren, at our corporate office. I see from last year the quality of the picture has been improved in the annual report, so congratulations on that. However, looking at it, there is something that comes to anyone's attention and is the lack of diversity among the staff. A 2015 analysis by Calvert Investments found that Coca-Cola was one of the best companies for workplace diversity, while Berkshire Hathaway was one of the worst. You've explicitly stated that you do not consider diversity when hiring for leadership roles and board members. Does that need to change? Are we missing any investment opportunities as a result? And do you consider diversity, however defined, of company leadership and staff when analyzing the value of a company that you may want to purchase? Well, there's a multiple part question. The, last, the answer to the last one is no. Um, what was the one before it? <laughs> You've explicitly stated you do not consider diversity when hiring for leadership roles and board members. Does that need to change, and are we missing yeah. any investment opportunities as a result? No, we, we will select board members, and we lay it out. And, and, uh, and we've done so for years, and I think we've been much more explicit uh, than most companies. Uh, we are looking for people who are business savvy, shareholder oriented, and have a special interest in Berkshire. And we found people like that. And as a result, I think, I, I, uh, I think we've got the best board uh, that we could have. They, they're not in it, they're clearly not in it for the money. Uh, I get called by consulting firms who've been told to get uh, candidates for directors for other companies. And uh, uh, by the questions they ask, it's clear they've got, they've got something other than the three questions we ask in terms of, of directors in mind. Uh, they really want somebody whose name will reflect credit on the institution, which means a big name. You know, and uh, you know, one organization recently, uh, the one that did the blood samples with small pricks, got uh, they got some very big names on their board. Uh, and Theranos, I think, or is that the way you pronounce it, Charlie? Theranos. From, uh, yeah. Yeah, and I mean the names are great, but. We, we're not interested in people that want to be on the board because they want to make a two, two or $300,000 a year, you know, for 10% of their time. And we're not interested in the ones who, for whom it's a prestige item uh, and who want to go and check boxes or the, that sort of thing. So I think we've, we've got, we will continue to apply that test, business savvy, shareholder oriented, and, and uh, with a strong uh, personal interest in Berkshire. And every share of the Berkshire that our shareholders own, they bought just like everybody else in this room. They haven't gotten them on option or they haven't gotten, you know, I've been on boards where they've given me stock. You know, they, they uh, I get it for breathing, basically. Uh, at half a dozen places that are maybe three or four that I was on the board of. Uh, we want our shareholders to walk in the shoes, I mean, our directors to walk in the shoes of shareholders. We want them to care a lot about the business and we want them to be smart enough so that they know enough about business that they know what they should get involved in and what they shouldn't get involved in. The people in the office, uh, I'm hoping that when we take the Christmas picture again this year, they're exactly the same. 25 that were there last year, even though we might have added 30,000 employees elsewhere and maybe 10 billion of sales or something like that. Uh, uh, it's a remarkable group of people. And they, I mean, just take this meeting, virtually every one of the 25, our CFO, my assistant, whoever, they've been doing job after job connected with making this uh, meeting a success and a pleasant, a pleasant outing for our shareholders. It's, it's a cooperative effort. 
the idea that you would have some department called annual meeting department and you know you'd have a person in charge of it and she or he would have an assistant and then they would go to various conferences about holding annual meetings and build up you know and then they'd hire consultants to come in and help them on the meeting we just don't operate that way I and mean, it's, it's a it's a place where everybody helps each other but, um, part of the what makes part of what makes my well, my, my job is extraordinarily easy but the people around me really make it easy and part of the reason it's easy is because we don't ha I, we don't have any committees uh, maybe we have some committee i don't know about but i've i've never been invited to any committees i'll put it that way at, at berkshire and we don't we, we may have a powerpoint someplace i haven't seen it and i wouldn't know how to use it anyway the we just don't do we don't have make work activities and and uh, we might go to a baseball game together or something like that. But it, I, I've, I've seen the other kind of operation, and I like ours better. I'll put it that way. Charlie? <laughs> well, years ago, I did some work for the Roman Catholic Archbishop of Los Angeles. And my senior partner pompously said, you know, you don't need to hire us to do this. There's some plenty of good Catholic tax lawyers. And the Archbishop looked at him like he was an idiot and said, Mr. Peeler, he says, last year I had some very serious surgery and I did not look around for the leading Catholic surgeon. <laughs> That's the way I feel about board members. <laughs> okay, Greg.